Uh, the Honorable Premier, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. All protocol observed. So I can see that I'm a public servant, so I'm a, I'm a technocrat, so I don't necessarily deliver keynote addresses. My responsibility here is to just to give a background of um, the economic situation in the country and what we are doing as the DTI, uh, being a department in the economic cluster to support economic growth and development in the country. So the, 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 I, I have a presentation here that I'll take you through what we call IPEP, which is the Industrial Police Action Plan. Um, it's, a, it's an action plan, so it's not necessarily uh, the policy position of government. So every year the minister tables the, the industrial um, policy action plan, trying to intervene in the economy so that we support sectors that are, are facing serious economic challenges. So the, 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 the IPEP, as we call it, it's, it's linked to the National Development Plan. So it's not a separate um, document per se. Uh, if you read the National Development Plan, it does allude to the challenges we, we face in the country and how we need to, uh, as government, respond to those challenges. So what government has done was first in 2007 to come up with the industrial um, policy framework, which um, in principle is, is, is the mother document um, influencing the IPEP, but also um, in, in 2012 government developed the, the National Development Plan um, in line with the National Growth uh, Plan, so which is mostly driven by the Department of Economic Development. So we have um, these documents which do indicate what government intend to do in responding to economic challenges in the country. But I think what is important um, is, is to get background on the economic challenges we are facing in the country, and especially the role of, 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 of manufacturing. Um, this slide does indicate the, the, the composition of economic growth in South Africa. Firstly, in 1994 and in, in 2013. And I want you to concentrate on, 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 on manufacturing that its contribution in 1994 was almost 21% and has declined to 11.6% um, in 2013. So what it means is that um, manufacturing is still an important sector in the economy, but is no more contributing as much as it did in, in 1994. Sectors that have grown um, finance, as you can see, the real estate business services, um, wholesale industry, as well as, as, as uh, government services. Now, those sectors, um, they are also important in the economy. But one thing about them, uh, they are not what we call tradable sectors. So we don't export uh, government services. We don't export finance per se. So with manufacturing, you employ, can also export. So there are many multipliers in, in manufacturing. And for a country um, like South Africa, with many people with low levels of education, manufacturing is important because the labor absorption rate in manufacturing is very high. So we don't have a choice, per se, as a country, but to, to, to support manufacturing because there are many multipliers there. So the same data presented differently. So if you look at, at, at the role of the primary sector, 
which mostly you find mining and, and agriculture. Uh, also secondary sector where manufacturing is and the tertiary sector where you find wholesale uh, business services. So in 2014, almost 62% of the contribution came from the tertiary sector. Now in the tertiary sector, the labor absorption rate is very low as compared to the sectors that are dwindling. So for me to be employed as a government official, I have to, as a minimum education of, yeah, minimum level of education is metric. But now we are having people in South Africa who don't have uh, metric percent can be absorbed in that sector that is growing. So it's important as we talk about the triple challenges of poverty, unemployment, and inequality. We also try to, to support sectors that can create uh, an employment giving and uh, the situation in, 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 in South Africa. Now, looking at also the, the, the manufacturing industry per se, and you look at the sectors that are contributing to, 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 to manufacturing in 1993, sorry, the other one supposed to have said in, in, in 2013, uh, you'll see that in 2013, the sectors that are growing is food, um, um, metals and machinery, as well as chemicals. So agro-processing is, is another sector that is it's, it's, it's important in, in the country, chemicals, metals, and, 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 and machinery. But all other sectors, but the biggest three, are the ones that are highlighted there. So, yeah, so when we do some interventions, we also have to get an understanding of what, what is happening. Um, we, we also looked at, at the import leakage in the country. The slide for me on my left hand side, the one that shows the trend lines, you will see the, the, the level of imports in the country as well as the, the, the declining manufacturing exports in, in, in South Africa. So manufacturing contribution to GDP has declined, as we have said, to um, 11.6 in 2013-14. In so what has happened also is that the, the import leakage is increasing in the country. So we are importing, in certain instances, even products that we can uh, manufacture. Uh, obviously, there you talk about issues, but the, the exchange rate and, and also the, 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 the pricing in the country that we can't compete in certain products with, with, with the imports. But we, you know, in certain instances, we find that there is dumping. So we have to intervene by, by increasing um, tariffs. In, in others, we use other um, economic policy or industrial policy instrument to, to support sectors under, under distress. Now, in terms of, of our international trade pat patents, sorry, some, some error there. Um, we see that internationally our trading partners are changing. We know that in Europe currently the serious economic challenges. Um, everybody knows about the challenges in Greece. But also since 2008, you know, the world has not really resolved um, you know, problems brought by, by recessions. But what, what is interesting in the graph is that the role of SADC, that SADC is now beginning to absorb most of our uh, manufactured products. You know, uh, as, as, as we still have our traditional trade partners, but what's important, the story is that Africa is changing and there are opportunities in, in Africa and that's the reason why we have our, our colleagues from our neighboring countries. The story there is that in terms of manufacturing, you must also consider looking at, at what is happening in SADC. Um, now, moving down to the province, I think that what I've presented so far was more about the, the macro, um, you know, economics of what is happening in terms of manufacturing, but also um, Within the country, we'll see that, as the Premier said, that uh, KZN is the second 
biggest uh, province in terms of economic growth. So following Gauteng, but also, I mean, the Western Cape. So those, they account to, for, for close to 60%. So those are the pillars in terms of economic growth in, in, in the country. But also, if you look at manufacturing contribution to provincial GDP, you'll see that, you know, um, KZN does beat Gauteng, surprising, you know, in, in 2014. So it contributed 15.8, almost 16%. So there is, um, maybe that's the reason why the, even the conference is here, you know, because, you know, manufacturing does play an important role in the province. Uh, and what we did was to look at, at the composition of the KZN economy. You'll still, you see that it's, it's a mirror of what is happening at the national level where uh, finance um, is, 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 is the leader in terms of composition in, 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 the, in the province itself. But still, uh, manufacturing is it's, it's the second biggest at 15.8. KZN share of employment by industry, obviously manufacturing is not leading. Uh, you have wholesale and, and community and social services being the, the leading uh, sectors in terms of, 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 of employment. So remember that in, in manufacturing, there is a balance between capital and labor. So the, the Manufacturing might be contributing that much, but not be the biggest employer. So note that, that balance as, as, as well. Now, the, the objectives of, of, of IPEP, obviously, is to diversify uh, the economy. I mean, we, we are intervening in the economy. We look at the data and then take a position as to what we must, we must, we must do. We want to promote labor absorbing uh, industries. As I've said that we have a challenge of unemployment in the country. Uh, the issue of economic transformation, obviously we must give uh, opportunities to those who have been uh, historically disadvantaged. The, the, the issue of industrial development in Africa is also uh, important as well as knowledge uh, economy, you know, cleaner technologies and so forth. Those are the sectors that we, we or the areas that we want to, to attend to. Now, when you read IPEP, um, you'll realize that we have sector-specific interventions as well as transversal um, sectors. So transversal sectors, we talk about public procurement, which I'm responsible for. Um, we want to leverage the kind of expenditure. I mean, we looked at the data and realized that government expenditure as a percentage of GDP uh, varies from 20 to 22%. So that's, that's massive. In any economy, anyway, government is the biggest spender. So we, we want to leverage that kind of expenditure as, you know, supporting uh, manufacturing. So you'll see later what, what, what we have done. But we also deal with issues around developmental tariff policy, where we look at tariffs. Uh, we've had the issue of chicken, um, you know, what we have done in terms of supporting the industry through tariffs. There's also working with Department of Science and Technology, the issue of, of innovation and technology, the industrial financing, there will be sessions here discussing uh, the issue of, of, of industrial financing. Regional economic growth and, and, and the SCZs, special economic zones. And in the province, if I'm not mistaken, we have the Dubai Trade Port uh, as well as Richards Bay being, you know, either industrial development zones or special economic zones. Um, so we also deal with, you know, actively involved in, 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 in Africa, creating free trade agreements and so forth. So those are transversal uh, areas that we are, we are dealing with. 
Um, as I've said, the issue of procurement, we have different levers. We have the National Industrial Participation Program managed by the DTI. So in this case, if government, any government department imports goods or services and the, the imported content is equal to or more than 10 million US dollars, there must be offset project. So if you buy a fleet of aircraft by SAA and the imported content, is, is, is equal to more than 10 million US um, dollars, then the supplier, either Boeing or Airbus, will have to participate in an offset project. Same as, as the Defense Industrial um, Participation Program, where the, if the important content is equal to or more than uh, 2 million US dollars. So those are known as the Amstel, is part of leveraging the government expenditure. We also have competitive supplier development program, which is managed by uh, sister department, Department of Public Enterprise. Um, you know, where we have ESCOM and Transnet. Uh, we know that the, currently we are buying rolling stock and we are building power stations. So suppliers there, um, they do implement competitive supplier development, making sure that we develop uh, local manufacturers, but we also link them to international uh, original equipment manufacturers. And there's designation and local production, which I'm, I'm responsible for, and I will talk more about it later. There is RIP, uh, Renewable Energy Independent Power Producer Program, managed by uh, Department of, of, of Energy, as we are also building uh, renewable energy power stations or, yeah, in, in the Northern Cape. Lastly is the local procurement accord, where at, um, at NEDLEC we have agreed with business that we are going to, to buy local. So business and labor, government, we have committed ourselves to, to buy local. So other levers, government can pass legislation to force all government departments to buy local or implement those. But you can't force the private sector to buy local. That is against the World Trade Organization trade-related investment measures. We can't force um, um, the private sector to do that. And that is why we have the local procurement accord. It's an accord where all social partners have committed themselves to, to buy local. So in terms of designated sectors, those are the ones that we have designated for local production. So when we hear people talking about local content, um, I don't want to talk about local procurement because it means different things. When you talk about local production, local content, designation of government, we talk about these sectors that have been designated for local procurement. So what it means, for instance, uh, power pylons, um, textile, clothing, leather, and food, any government department that is buying uniform, um, carpets, uh, linen, we don't allow imports in the country. Those must be manufactured at 100% in the country. So same as power pylons. I think those are the two uh, at 100%. So others, rail rolling stock, um, the, the Prasa there and Transnet, they're going to buy, besides the ones that we have imported, but the ones, other ones that are coming, they're going to be manufactured in the country at 65% minimum threshold. So there's an opportunity for manufacturers to supply different components. You know, there's Kibela, which is led by Alstom, is going to build a factory in Niger. So what it means is that it must work with South African manufacturers when they, 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 they build or assemble those locomotives and as well as coaches. So there's an opportunity in the value chain for can either supply windows, you know, seats, whatever. We, we are working with, with those. I mean, in, in, in the case of Transnet, we know that uh, General Electric from the US, uh, Bombardier from Canada, uh, China South Rail, China North Rail, they've been awarded tenders to manufacture locomotives. So they must work with South African uh, manufacturers. Uh, in responding also to energy challenges, the uh, solar water geysers, uh, they've been the components thereof, 
they have been uh, designated for, for local production. Same as, as, as uh, furniture products. So any government that buys, uh, department that buys furniture must procure the furniture in the country, you know, at, at, at 85%. So there are instruction notes issued by the National Treasury. So if you go to the National Treasury website, you'll find the instruction notes for, you know, assisting you how to respond to, to tenders. Now, this is not only about buying, you know, link it to manufacturing. So if all government departments in the province, uh, in all spheres of government, so national departments in the province, provincial departments and, and, and uh, municipalities can buy furniture. For instance, we can increase aggregate demand, you know, and support local manufacturers. So these are low-lying fruits. I mean, rail obviously becomes complex. But uh, textile, clothing, leather, and footwear, we can support uh, local manufacturers. And because as government, we have demand, you know, and we have the buying power to support um, manufacturers. The same as residential electricity meters. We have not noticed that municipalities are moving into uh, smart meters, you know, in responding to the energy challenges and the other problems. I mean, I've seen here, yeah, it's water. So we are working with the Department of Energy as well as um, Department of Cooperative uh, Governance in, in, in supporting manufacturers as municipalities are moving into smart meters. Industrial financing, I think there's going to be a session there, but we do have different incentives at the DTI. You know, the biggest one being the um, the MSEP, you know, we, we have um, yeah, 5.4 billion over the medium term expenditure framework to support uh, companies to increase or improve productivity. So if you go to the DTI website or to a website, I think it's uh, www.investmentincentives.co.za, you will find all government uh, incentives there you know, financing different um, or aimed at different manufacturers. So it's not only, MSEP is not only about the, as I've said, it's not a policies and action plan, but we also have uh, finances um, there. I mean, the other issue, as I've spoken about also, is the, the regional economic development, the special economic zones, where we've budgeted uh, 3.5 billion over the MTF. You know, as the last one that has been designated, the SEZ is the Maluti. Uh, SEZ in, in, in Harrismith aimed at the, the logistics because we know that between Devon and Johannesburg, that's the busiest route in, in South Africa. So there's an opportunity there to, to support the logistics industry. But in this province, we also have two, uh, SEZ or IDZ, so that we we can encourage, you know, um, manufacturers to, I mean, it's the same, the economics of agglomeration that you are uh, pulled in one area so that if the, the ones that are next to the port, if you are, want to export, there will be uh, incentives there as, as well. We have also sectoral um, areas, you know, as we know that uh, I've said chemicals, we've identified it as one of the biggest contributor. We have a program aimed at the sector. We also work with industry associations as well. The autos, as the Prima has alluded earlier, we do have incentives um, directed at the autos, the metals, clothing. We didn't only designate for local production. We do have incentives managed by the IDC. Uh, for, for the clothing and, and textile sector. The other program that we have identified is agro agro-processing, as we have seen, that is a sector that is contributing to, to economic growth in the country. And the last one, there is business process uh, services, where we, we, we now have a program and international um, organizations have their um, you know, business processes, services, 
in, in, in the country. There is a program there. If you go to the TTI website, you can know more as well. Uh, the other new ones, which are obviously responding to advanced economic development or, and, and, and also new technological development, we, we do finance aerospace and, and defense. Um, and we are proud to say, I mean, uh, in terms of the offset program, Denel does supply um, uh, Airbus with, with components. So we have a program and also Aerosuit we do have programs responding to, aer to aerospace and defense, advanced materials, white goods, and electrotechnical. That's a, a new area which we, we want to, 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 to support. Uh, we have seen that Samsung has moved to do a trade port and also um, Hisense in, in Cape Town. So that, that's because of uh, our new focus on, 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 on white goods. Broadband. That's an opportunity in ICT generally. We, we are uh, moving into that area. Ship and boat building, as we have seen in the designated sector, this is one area that we have designated. We do support uh, manufacturing industries in the, in the sector or manufacturing companies, not only through designation, incentives and other industrial policy support as well. Um, well, the other area is minerals and energy, and as I'm here today, there is uh, Operation Pakisa, where government as well as business, they're currently discussing uh, the beneficiation of minerals in, in the country. That's another focus area we are having. But generally, when we, we do, as a country, have some serious energy challenges, and those challenges, they impact on the economy. One, as we know that we, we the, I mean, everyone knows about electricity prices and challenges at ESCOM, but that's not the main issue. We also have issues around emissions, and I, I think one of the resolutions will be how to resolve those. In, in South Africa, if you look at the graph on the, my left-hand side on the top there, just we two countries, you know, developed countries and some of their trading partners. We plotted uh, CO2 emissions against uh, GDP per capita. You see that one of our challenges we have is that our GDP per capita is not growing. So we are an energy intensive country, but the other challenge is that we need to grow uh, the, the, the GDP per capita. And it must also inform our, our investment choices so there's no point to go and attract companies that are energy intensive but are going to contribute less to the economic development of this country. So there are many challenges that we must resolve as a country. It's not only government that must respond to that. Uh, business must respond to that. We must give opportunities to, to, to uh, inhabitants of, of, of this country. So. It's not only manufacturing, it's not only rising energy prices, but it's our intensity uh, in terms of, of, of energy consumption as well, as well as emissions. But also, countries must grow over time. Yeah. That is why we have a sectoral focus on green industries. It's not on the transport side, it's also on, on the energy uh, renewable energy investment, eco-labeling, green skills, and so forth. We, 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 you know, and that is why we are having this session today. You know, its focus is on energy efficiency. I have spoken more about minerals beneficiation that there is currently an operation, Pakistan discussion managed by the presidency to come and agree um, with government and business on, on the way forward. In, in not only exporting primary minerals, but also beneficiate in, in the country. Thanks. Sir.